Hi everyone, this is Marie Blue Angel, and today I am back with Love and Country, and we find ourselves in the streets of La Rock. Um, Lillian is following after a meal after he kind of stormed out from the train station after they fought. Um, if you want more details about that, you should check out my last part of my playthrough, um, which um, you can find on my channel. Anyways, I'm just really curious to see what's going to happen because I left them while they're still fighting, so we'll see. But now we see some very nice, beautiful scenery of this street that we've exited on from this station, and I really like it. I like the feeling. It's good. Anyways, without further ado, let's just get into it. I dodgedly follow him outside the station, Emil we're following, and down the cobblestone streets of Lorac, struggling to match his pace. He's like running, he's power walking. Lorac, like so many European cities, is a crop of half-timbered buildings nestled among the Rhine River. Is it Rhine or Rhin? I don't know. I'm American. I have no idea. <laughs> so sorry. Um, it's the kind of quaint town that would have attracted tourists in droves before the war. I do like a... A place where you can see a river and like experience a little bit of like a river uh river scenery um i like places like that a lot not that i can appreciate the surroundings at all i'm too busy fuming at emile the nerve of him why would i trust him to get us through the border when he's been nothing but unprofessional this entire time <laughs> I don't know, Lillian. I, I, I would think, I don't know. I feel like at least to some degree you have to trust him. But like, fair. You guys don't know each other, so who am I to judge? But I feel like, again, if Margot put you guys together and you trust Margot, I feel by association, I should trust, I would trust Emil. But maybe that's me being a little too optimistic. You know, I'm, I'm sure Lillian, I, I understand her point of view. This is some like random new person that we've just met, so. <sighs> this partnership may have looked good on paper, but in practice, it's another story entirely. And I'll have a lot to say to Margot about Emile. <laughs> of course. Just wait until we get back to Paris. Hmm. If we get back to Paris. We just have to find Herbert Denham and get him out of here alive. And I'll need to do a lot more than cause a distraction to get him across the border. How am I supposed to get him across the border? That's what Emil's for! <laughs> I'm assuming Emil has paper. It's either like he has papers or we do a tag team distraction situation. That's what I would think. I don't know how we're going to get him out, but um, it's better to have Emil than not have Emil at this point, I think. Oh, Lillian. I do get you, girl. I truly do. I am rooting for you, to be honest. Um, so, we'll see. Okay, they've arrived at the hotel. <laughs> One after the other. Before I reach a solution, we arrive at the Hotel Loen. The porter lets us in through a set of double doors into the lobby. Ooh, I want to see. Ooh, I like the blues and the browns here. Very good color combination. I can't read the German. I'm like trying to read over here. That's also kind of too far away for me. It's not a large hotel, but it does seem well maintained. The wood is polished, the carpets are clean, and there's a nice little fire and a hearth by the sitting area. Seems like a nice enough place to convalesce. I will not read German. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> can I help you? The clerk approaches us, but Emil has no idea what he's saying. Oh, right. I forget that he doesn't speak German. <laughs> See, this is why you guys need each other. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. I'm just going to laugh the entire time. I think it was just so funny. Oh, my goodness. Emil turns to me with a scowl. He needs me. He can't do this without me, and he hates it. <clears throat> I cough to get the clerk's attention. Hello, my husband and I need a room for the night. I arrange for a room with a private bath and everything that we will need. The clerk hands us a heavy metal key and directs us to room 14. As we head up the stairs to the second floor, I can't help but give Emil a smug little smile. I 
can tell he has something to say, but he keeps it to himself while we pass through the hall. Oh, cute, look at this room. There's like the little flowers right here. It looks very like bright and nice and cozy. I like it. Once in the safety of our room, I wait for him to apologize, but he doesn't. He just drops his valise on the ground and lets himself fall face first onto the bed. He's so tired. So, where are we supposed to meet Mr. Denham? His response is muffled by the pillows he smashed his face into. What? He rolls over. I don't know. He's still grumpy. <laughs> Look at that face. He's like, <laughs> okay, sir, I get it. Oh my God. Maybe we should talk about what happened. <sighs> you guys are going to, you guys are going to stress me out, honestly. I stare at him expectantly. Do you at least know what room he's staying in? Of course not. Nothing could be agreed before we came. You know, I wish you had bothered to share some of this information with me earlier. I could have asked the front desk clerk while we were checking in. He probably knows who else has checked in, or he can at least check the guest book. He sits up like a jack-in-the-box. Absolutely not. Do you know how closely the Germans are watching Denim? If you ask for him, you may as well be ringing an alarm bell to tell him that you are here. Do you have a better idea? We can't exactly go knocking on every hotel, every door in the hotel. Unless you think we'll just happen to run into Denim in the hall. No, we need to check the guest book. You just said that was a bad idea. No. I said it was a bad idea to ask. These two are so funny. Okay, but true, true, true. Bad idea to ask, because I get that. It would alert, you know, the German authorities who are, like, closely observing denim. But you guys can sneakily look at the book or, you know, figure out a way to do that. We'll just check the guest books are... De Goodness. We'll just check the guest book ourselves, without asking. He lays out a plan to wait until the clerk goes on break and then sneak behind the desk. It's risky, but we don't appear to have another choice. With a sigh, I remove my hat and gloves and set them down neatly on top of my bags. Should we at least freshen up before we head downstairs? Emil rolls his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so grumpy. I mean, I understand. Oh my god, you guys need to talk about it. You guys are gonna kill me here. Anyways, do whatever you want. Hmm. It seems I'm not forgiven yet. He takes his jacket off, tossing it aside, and returns to the bed. As he dozes, I go about my business quietly. I remove my travel clothes and head to the washroom. A splash of cool water on my face and running a brush through my hair does wonders, do wonders for my mood. I re-tighten my corset, feeling my posture lift. Ooh, that corset. A change of dress and a little perfume, and I feel like a new woman. When I emerge from the washroom, Emil is sound asleep. Taking cat-like steps across the room, I sit on the edge of the bed to observe. He's on his side with both arms crooked in front of him, his head on his hands. The image of him resting like this would be almost pleasant, except... Is he scowling? I lean in for a closer inspection. His brows are indeed knitted together, and there's a slight frown on his face. Even in sleep, he can't help but be displeased. How appropriate. I sit in silence for a moment, wondering if I should wake him, but think better of it. I still have things to unpack. I hang up my other dresses, fold my underclothes, and lay out my shoes on the floor. Combing through my handbag to make sure I haven't missed anything, I come across the hidden panel where I'd stashed my old passport earlier. Back at the cafe, I didn't really take more than a brief look at Emile's version. I'm curious as how it compares, how it compares to the real thing. Oh, cool. 
She's only 20? Oh my gosh, she's so young. Um, I'm just looking at the information here. So here's her portrait, I mean her like ID photo, her hair, color, eye color, or like sources. That's also red, question mark. Eyebrows? Mm. Wow, they have a lot of information just like describing your face. Okay. Particular details, short hair. Okay, like a short haircut, okay. Take, okay, I just had to look at that. Taking my fake passport out, I look at the two side by side. Emile's work is remarkably detailed. The calligraphy style is a perfect match. The red seal is identical down to the embossing. I flip over the fake to the back side. There are a few stamps showing where else where else Lillian Twain is meant to have traveled, giving me cover for my giving my cover a history. The stamps all look so official. How did he manage it? He's a professional. <laughs> Lillian, he knows what he's doing, of course. Oh my gosh. Anyways, of course he's woken up. <clears throat> Looking at my work now. I start. Looking over my shoulder, I see Emil propped on his el propped up on his elbows, leaving me leveling me with that sleepy, furrowed gaze of his. It's actually very good. <laughs> I don't think it's too late. It's a little late for that, Nispa. I don't think so, Emil. <laughs> but whatever. I mean, it's a little it's a little late, but better late than never, you know, as we say. I color, slightly ashamed. He's right. No matter the quality of his work, I dismiss I dismissed him out of hand. I do think you might need to apologize. You should apologize, Lily, and you guys need to make up. Even after Margot vouched for him, I never treated him as a partner. Exactly. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Now we are in enemy territory and barely on speaking terms. Will we be able to get past this to do our job? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Yes, let's. Oh, I need, I need you guys to chat it out. I think there's still room to communicate about this, but I guess we're gonna go check if the clerk is on break. Emil dons his jacket and we head downstairs together. As we approach the bottom stair, I scan the lobby. There's a family discussing dinner plans and an old woman who appears to be lecturing the clerk. Emil escorts me to the seating area where we station ourselves on an unoccupied sofa. I take up a ladies magazine to give myself something to do while Emil lights a cigarette. I keep my eyes on my reading material as I start talking in a low tone. So, what now? <laughs> With his little cigarette. We want the clerk to take his rest. It doesn't look like he will be doing that anytime soon. Not with that lady talking his ear off. That old lady can go on, can only go on for so long. We can wait. Once the lobby clears, we need to do something that takes the clerk away from the desk. I can do that. You already know that I can draw attention to myself. <laughs> I laughed at that, okay, but I'm also laughing now. Because, yeah, he's also trying not to laugh. How cute. Or smile, rather. I look over just in time to see the corner of Emile's mouth twitch like he's trying not to smile. And how long can you keep him with you? As long as you need. He gives the slightest nod. I was prepared to explain my idea, but he's not asking. Somehow, after everything I put him through today, he seems prepared to trust me. A guilty knot forms in my stomach. I'm sure you guys will work it out later. It's good. Okay, look, he's showing that he trusts you. You can all, you're learning how to trust him too. That's good. We'll be fine, guys. The family, oh, the family arguing about which restaurant to go to finally reaches a consensus, reach a consensus, and head outside. The old woman continues giving the poor clerk an earful. Nothing seems to meet her satisfaction here. He dutifully hears out all of her complaints and apologizes profusely. When the old woman feels sufficiently mollified, she shuffles back upstairs. 
The tired clerk sighs deeply before shuffling the papers around the desk. Here goes nothing. Go, Lillian, go. I stand up and head towards the desk. Oh, hello. <laughs> You're probably so tired. As the clerk sees me approach, he schools his features into a smile for me. Looks so friendly. <clears throat> How can I help you? Excuse me, is the dining room open? I'm afraid not. But there is an excellent restaurant just down the street from here. He points in the direction I need to go. Very good, thanks. And is it cold out? Yes, it is. Huh, then I should get my coat. Thanks. Now to draw him away from the desk. I start heading towards the stairs like I'm going back to my room, but about halfway there, I intentionally misstep and tumble to the ground. I love it. Good distraction. <laughs> the clerk is shocked. Fraulein! Just as I had hoped, the clerk leaves his desk and comes rushing towards me. All right, Emil, now is your chance. Are you hurt? Uh, I'm all right. How clumsy of me. The clerk offers me his hand, and as he helps me stand, I look past the clerk. Oh, look, there's a meal in the back. <laughs> oh, wait, I like this. I don't even know why I'm so shocked. Wow. He's hard at work. He's like, do, 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 looking at the guest book. Gotta check if Herbert Dunham's in here. Do, do, do. Okay, great, perfect. Go, Emil, go. Sure enough, Emil has taken this opportunity to sneak behind the front desk. Once on my feet, I wince. On my ankle! Miss, should I fetch the doctor? I'd glance over the clerk's shoulder again. Emil is flipping through the guest book as quietly and quickly as possible, but he doesn't seem to have Denham's name yet. The clerk starts to pull away from me, but I clutch his arm. No! No, uh, but could you help me get help me get to that chair over there? Maybe it will be all right if I sit and rest for a moment. He puts my arm over his shoulders and helps me hobble over to the sitting area. I draw this out as long as possible to give Emil ample time. The clerk helps me helps to lower me into the closest armchair, concern still written over his face. Are you sure I can't fetch the doctor for you? I lift my leg and start rolling my ankle slowly. No, I don't think anything is broken. I see Emil run his finger down one of the pages. Just a little longer. I put my hand on the clerk's arm and give it a gentle squeeze. Uh, can I bring you anything? Or call someone for you? You are so kind. Emil finally emerges from behind the desk. He is back on the right side now. No, but thank you, really. The clerk appears to be at loss, but I offer a reassuring smile and insist once more that I should be fine in a mu and I and I insist once more that I should be fine in a few minutes. He returns to his post. I continue stretching and massaging my ankle until Emil comes back to the sitting area. He looks troubled. What's wrong? Did you find him? He's not here. The book says he checked out yesterday. Yesterday? Where are we? <laughs> no! We got here on time as quickly as we could. Does that mean he made it out of his own? Made it out on his own then? I don't know. I can hear the anxiety creeping into Emil's voice. If he had made it to safety, he would have told the Dursium, the Dursium Bureau, Bureau. Oh my god, I can't do a low voice. And the French pronunciation. Okay, that's okay. That's true. Denim would have said something. No. Something must have gone wrong. So what now? If we are lucky, he may still be in town. But if he was arrested, there is nothing we can do. Hmm. Where do we even start to look? Emile thinks carefully. Monsieur Denim was here wanting a spa for his sickness, right? There can't be that many places like that in one town. But how could we find them all? We could ask. 
If we head back to the train station, the station master could probably point to every spa hotel on the map. Emil looks deeply uncomfortable at this prospect. They are used to at they are used to tourists asking those kinds of questions, you know. That is true. I though that, that that is a little. I I I could see that it's also tricky, though I could also see Lillian's point. It's a plan that like it's an option. I don't know if we have any other plans unless unless like the clerk here has the map and we ask the clerk, for example, and we're like, yes, maybe we should go to the spa, take in the waters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you have a better idea, I'm all ears. Emil narrows his eyes, clearly trying to make sense of the phrase, I'm all ears, but gives up and sighs. Such a funny expression in English. Fine. Let's head to the station. So soon after we walked angrily from the station. Back at the Basin Badisher Banhof, the station master is able to assist us just as I predicted. He points out six spa hotels on, the ma on our map of Lorac, the Loen being one of them. Who knows how many we'll have to visit before we find Denim. I glance at a clock hanging before us. Above us, rather. It's mid-afternoon. If we want to hit as many as possible before nightfall, we have to hurry back into town. Our pace is not leisurely as we make our way through the cobbled streets. It's rushed and somewhat staggered as we continually have to stop and consult the map when we think we've found one of the hotels. After visiting the second one, with no luck, I point us in a direction that ends up putting us in a giant circle. Emil curses and throws the map on the ground when we realize my mistake. We lose about 30 minutes with that detour. I'm unsure, I'm unsure if it's due to my weariness or my steadily throbbing feet, but I begin to notice that there are more than a handful of soldiers patrolling the streets. It's strange for such a small town to have such a military presence, especially so far from the front. Were they here when we first arrived to Loen? And was I just too focused on my anger to notice? I mean, maybe. We did not. I don't believe I heard, I saw, uh, had that in any of the descriptions, so Lillian at least didn't notice then when we first went to the hotel. Regardless, it doesn't bode well for what Emil and I are here to do. But there's no possible way they could know who we are. Who would be expecting two French spies in a place such as this? Right? Unless someone at the Bureau... Unless someone got that information from the Bureau or someone who knows of the plan, that's the only way. Um, that, like... Obviously, there's many ways to know that, but that's the only way. But I wouldn't suspect that. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you should suspect that. Is that a good thing to do? Um, probably. You have to be on your toes and all that. I shake the anxious thoughts from my head and focus on the task at hand. First things first, we've got to find Denim. Then we can worry about whatever darkness may lurk around the corner. We continue on our trek. At each hotel that we visit, we pull a similar routine. I make a distraction while Emil checks the guest book. Um, I will also say going back to how they had like a detour for 30 minutes, honestly, my goodness. I still get lost with my phone pulling up a map for directions. I can imagine having to actually like look at a physical map and then like really trust it, to, like trust myself to follow like the streets and stuff and the directions that I think the map is pointing me to. Because my map interpretation um, is pretty bad. That skill is pretty bad for me, so. Mm. After another pretend twisted ankle, two swoons, and miles of walking, my feet are screaming at me and my stomach begins to rumble. Emil still charges ahead, his nose steep into the now slightly crumpled map. I trot up next to him and tug on the back of his jacket. Emil, I need a break. He shakes his head, his stride never slowing. I struggle to keep up with him. We cannot stop. We need to find him. I know we do, truly, but my stomach groans quite loudly. <laughs> Emil halts and raises his eyebrow at me. Was that you? I, uh, yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Girls hungry, okay? We've been we've been running around. We we've checked 
uh you that was at least three so maybe this is like our last hotel or two we need to find we've checked almost all the hotels and it's all over this this city this town of course she'd be hungry i'm surprised you're not hungry my dude but maybe he doesn't eat as much i don't know who knows i'm hungry sorry can't we at least stop for some dinner i promise we'll get right back to it the moment we're finished Besides, you haven't eaten anything at all. All you had was coffee at the cafe earlier. But... Please? <laughs> she looks so, like, please, let's go. I mean, honestly, I think it's better to take a break and, you know, replenish your fuel and all that so as not to make any unnecessary, trivial, very, like, very, like, minor mistake that you wouldn't have made if you had more energy. So let's, let's do that. I clasp my hands in front of me in a pleading gesture. Emil's, uh, Emil eyes me for a moment, perhaps enjoying the sight of my desperate begging. I don't care if it amuses him or even disgusts him, as long as it gets me fed. <laughs> she has her priorities straight. <laughs> of course, I would not, I would literally be so, like, distracted by my, like, hunger in the way of, like, I wouldn't be able to, like, focus on my task at hand as well if I wasn't fed and I was really hungry. So we should go eat. Finally, he sighs and folds up the map, stowing it in his jacket pocket. Hello. How about there? Or here, rather. Emil jerks his head towards a half-timbered building with a wooden sign hanging above the door. Kraus and Klinger. Okay. There's a design of two mugs clinking below, <laughs> below the letters. It's probably some kind of public house. Regardless, I perk up. That works. Mmm, let's get some pub food. Ooh. This is a nice little background. People are enjoying their food and being merry and resting, I hope. We duck inside, finding ourselves in the middle of a bustling tavern. It's loud and somehow quite, quite dimly lit, even though it's still day outside. The smell of beer and mustard hit me squarely in the face. I look over to see Emil wrinkling his nose. While we're busy taking in our surroundings, a barmaid juggling handfuls of frothy mugs nearly bowls over us. I sidestep but find my shoes sticking unpleasantly to the floorboards. Oh yeah, mm. I, that's a feeling. Just sit anywhere. Okay, cool. She says that, but there aren't many options. I prefer something out of the way, maybe in a corner, but they all seem taken. Emil nods towards a table in the middle of the room. I shrug and head towards it, too hungry to consider other options. Oh, there you go. You guys sit there. He looks so grumpy. Emil. Okay, we need some food, but I don't know. Maybe you're not gonna, gonna like the food. Who knows? I don't know how picky you are with your food. You, yeah, you're right. We've only seen you have coffee and your wine yesterday. What is he, what, what kind of food do you like? You look so tired. <laughs> it's several minutes before I can flag the barmaid down. When I request a menu, she frowns and disappears into the back. She returns with one, a single page of about five items. I'm about to ask for a second, but Emil stops me. Don't bother. It's not like I can read it anyway. I can barely read it either. I know what these words mean individually, but the way they are combined doesn't always make sense. He clicks his tongue, clearly dismissive of my predicament. This one, for example. Multishin. That means mouth bag. How am I supposed to translate that? Maybe don't order it then. Just hurry up and eat something so we can leave. I grumble and return to the minuscule me menu. Maybe it's like a... I don't know. Yeah, like, what is it? Like, is it a, not a brand? A mouth bag. I have no idea. I have, I have like, no sense either. I know no German, so... And know very, very, very little about German culture. Um, so... Mm. A Lieberkass? That will probably be some kind of cheese dish. And anything with worse will become some kind of sausage, I think. I can hear Emil's foot tap impatiently under the table until the barmaid returns again. I order everything off the menu with the words I recognize, but my efforts earn me nothing but an odd look. Und? Uh, that will be enough food, won't it? 
Unzu oh, to drink and to drink. Water is fine. Her face drops, making me feel as though I've said something wrong. Or beer? <laughs> he looks so shocked. He gives she gives an exasperated sigh and with a terse Yawol, Jawol, turns away to one of the other patrons behind us. I have no idea. Emil leans in looking incredulous. <laughs> oh yeah, like <laughs> why well, we have to blend in a little bit, Emil, okay? It's not like she's actually well, I don't know. She could drink her beer, she'd be fine. He looks his expression is so funny. Did you just order beer? I had to. Did you see how she looked at me when I tried to order water? She would have thrown me out if I didn't order something. We can't get drunk right now, Lily. And he's like, I wish I could get drunk right now. That's the face of someone that... <laughs> That's the face of someone who's like, mm, I would like to be drunk right now. I am a little high key stressed. Or I'd like to get drunk after we complete this mission. You guys are so funny. Okay. We can't get drunk right now, Lillian. Relax, we won't. We don't have to drink it all, and there will be food with it. It will be fine. Well, I'm not paying for any of this. Oh, don't act like you were ever going to. He glowers at me, but holds his tongue. We sit in silence for a while, letting the sounds of the rambunctious crowd fill the space between us. A woman bumps hard into Emile's back, knocking him forward into the table. He shoots, he shoots her a look, a surly look, but she doesn't notice, continuing to cackle with her friends. Me too. <laughs> with a frown, he takes out his cigarette case and lights up. <sighs> He's like, I can't be here. I cannot fucking wait to get back to Paris. Oh, did you change your mind about travel? He gives me a derision, a derisive sort of mock laugh. Hilarious. Huh. It must be because you made the experience so nice. I apologized for that. No, you didn't. Uh, you didn't apologize, girl. I shrink a little. Thinking back, I guess I never did. But what do I even apologize for? Well, I meant to. I'm sorry. That I never apologized. Hmm. Not quite what I was looking for. My god, his little eyebrow raise, please. <laughs> I love all the different, like, expressions and stuff we get to see from Emile and Lillian, but... Oh my gosh. So handsome. Try again. Do you really want an apology you had to force from me? No. In fact, I don't want anything from you. He takes a drag from a cigarette and leans back in his chair, choosing to stare boredly over the heads of the crowd then at me. So much for men tr so much for trying to mend fences. I know I was in the wrong earlier, but Emile is being so irritable that I don't want to try anymore. We sit there stewing in silence until the barmaid reappears to slam two very tall mugs of beer onto our table. <laughs> Shocked face again. Mon dieu, you ordered pints? No, I just asked for beer. I didn't specify how much. Looking around the bar, though, I don't see any smaller glasses. <laughs> He's just so shocked. He's like, what are you doing, Lillian? What is happening? But you know what? She is your German interpreter, so we do what what Lillian wants to do, slash what we need to do to blend in. Um, I still think that Lillian also, going back to earlier, the earlier moment, she should really apologize. Like, I... She needs to I need her to figure it out, and she needs to apologize, because I think that's what's gonna lessen his irritability overall, and then they would be able to, like, continue forth in, like, a nice new way together for the rest of the assignment. And then if they never want to work with each other ever again, who knows? Then they don't. Then they don't have to. It will be okay. We will see. I don't know. Okay, anyway. I think this is just how it comes. He throws me another dirty look. Excuse you, I didn't know. I also would not have known, but also given, again, we're at a bar, everyone else has pints. There are like, can't get like two ounces or whatever. That's not what's happening. I groan and rub my temples. Emil, can we just try to get along? I know we got off on the wrong foot, but we're never going to pull this mission off if we spend the entire trip fighting. What do feet have to do with it? 
Ah, I see the expression. I was like, what are we talking about? It's an, it's an expression. Look, just... I pinch the bridge of my nose in frustration and sigh. We've got beer. Food is on the way. Let's try to enjoy it, all right? You want me to enjoy watching you put food in your face? What? No, I don't... I don't do that. Wait, aren't you going to eat? Not until I see what you ordered. You didn't seem too confident. We could be eating horses' eyeballs for all I know. You're infuriating. He just meant that we should use this dinner as an opportunity to get to know one another. He makes a face, another one, and draws from his cigarette. I don't know about that. I can't blame him for not trusting me now, after the way I judged him when he shared that this was his first time outside of Paris. It was a mistake, but not one that I will make again. What if he trade? Trade? Sure. For anything you tell me, I will tell you something of equal value. If you tell me about a time that, I don't know, you slipped in the mud and fell on your ass or something, I'll tell you about the time that I walked into a glass door. Fair? You walked into a glass door? Mm -mm. You had to tell me something first. He studies me, clearly tempted by the prospect of learning something potentially embarrassing about me. Unless, of course, you're scared. Huh. Scared of you? No. All right. I will play your little game. But you will go first. Fine. I'm an only child. I'm not an only child. Oh? Brothers or sisters? He shakes his head as he takes a sip of his beer. That's not the game. I purse my lips, mildly annoyed that at this loophole he's found. This is not exactly what I had in mind, but it's a start. Okay, so you have you have siblings. Lil Lillian doesn't, which we... I mean, I didn't know for sure, but it seems from her talk about her parents and no mentions of like another sibling or anything that that was the case so that makes sense i don't have any sisters and neither do i aha then you have brothers or at least a brother emil nods amused that i'm not letting him off the hook but i'd like something a little more substantial if i share more details i'll get more details all right then when I was five, my parents hired her nanny, who was French. She taught me the basics of the language, but I didn't really become fluent until I went to the Manoir Vauquelin. Vauquelin, rather. Manoir Vauquelin. What the hell is that? A finishing school. He still looks confused. It's a school where they teach you all the things that society ladies are supposed to know. Which silverware to use at dinner, how to paint en plein air, dancing, proper posture, things like that. Isn't that like painting? Truff, uh, translated roughly as in the open air, en plein air is the practice of painting outdoors. The techniques created by this practice were especially relevant to the Impressionism art movement, headed by artists like Claude Monet and Pierre-Auguste Renoir. Uh, or Renoir. Renoir? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, like, stuff around here that, like, in the summer they do, like, a en plein air, like, event or weekend or kind of festival, so that's fun. Things that are supposed to make a lady desirable to prospective husbands. <laughs> Same here, <laughs> Emil. That's dumb. Admittedly, yes, but the world seems to think I'm better for it. Now you. I was taught English by my mother. She is American, but she has lived in Paris for a long time, since before I was born. Oh, okay. Interesting. I love all this information. Okay, so it's interesting. That makes sense for Lillian, then. Her nanny was French. She learned more and then, like, learned more at finishing school, which is very interesting, then, that she more so solidified her, like, like higher level of fluency at finishing school rather than like a little bit soon, like, you know, maybe she like took more lessons um, or something. I don't know, did her parents just send her to France or she wanted to go to France, maybe. Um, or maybe they have roots 
in France? I'm not sure. Um, but that's still interesting. And then Emile, also, his mama is American. How nice. Um, hmm. So he's, she's the one who's taught him English. <laughs> he's being so sassy. And I have never attended finishing school, as I have no wish to find a husband. <laughs> I smirk at this, sitting back in my chair to absently, absently toy with the handle of my mug beer, or my beer mug. What about finding a wife? She says internally, but not externally. I feel odd for asking myself something like this. I'm not interested in him per se. It's merely a piece of the Emil puzzle I seem to be missing at this point. Mm-hmm, sure it is. Okay. She says per se. I feel to some degree that means you're slightly interested, Lillian. He's certainly old enough to consider courting. He's like 22 then. Uh, because on when they were doing their passport, uh, when they were at the like immigration to get into Germany from the, at the train station, um, she's two years younger than him based on the year um, that she they both said. See, girl, look look at look at your inner thoughts leading one way or the other. You are at least somewhat interested. We cannot be in denial. We can't be that in denial, you know? Anyways. Is there some girl in Paris waiting for Emile to give, a ring, to give her a ring? Hopefully nicer than the one I'm wearing. Was that woman he argued with the, the bar last night someone special to him? If she was, I think he would have gone to her last night to apologize instead of staying out all night drinking. Still, my curiosity gets the better of me. Yes, Lillian, thank you, because I want to know too. Anyways, I want to see, I want to know. Let me feed into my delusion that you guys are going to get together on this route. We will see. I'm not seeing anyone right now, romantically. Emile's eyebrows shoot up in surprise. Where did that come from? <laughs> Emil, you did not hear the inner monologue that was happening, but but we did. Where did that come from? I'm just curious what your life is like back in Paris. That's all plausible deniability. <laughs> and now you have to tell me. That's the rule, remember? You let her control the question. Honestly, yeah, Emil, like you may have been like, I don't want to share anything that I don't want to share. But you did give Lillian the upper hand by getting to lead, letting her lead and guide what's happening here. Also, where is her food? Not that I don't love this, but uh, <clears throat> I'm, well, what do you mean by romantic? I'm slightly baffled by this. What does romance mean to Emil that he wants clarification? Shouldn't it be straightforward? Shouldn't it be a straightforward question to answer? Are you in love? Or are you involved with someone? Those are two different things. Okay, fair. They are? Yeah, Lillian, they are, apparently. <laughs> I mean, I could see it culturally, but also more currently, people, some of the more current modern dating standards are like that also. If your question is if I'm available, <laughs> he looks so sassy saying this. Oh my god! If your question is if I'm available, I don't even know how well I'm doing my like lower pitch voice right now because I'm so into the story. Okay, I need to calm down. If your question is if I'm available, I no, that's not what I'm asking. Forget it. I. The sound of the tavern door swinging open and hitting the wall interrupts me. I look back at it, expecting a tornado for all the commotion it made, but instead see a group of six men all clad in gray spilling inside. Soldiers? <laughs> Sorry, this character's right. He's a little like... <gasps> German soldiers. They seem to be a few drinks in, hanging over each other's shoulders and guffawing. To my dismay, they all plod over to the only empty table in the room, the one that just happens to be next to ours. Emil hurriedly stamps out his cigarette and reaches for his jacket. We should go. Tension is written across Emil's face, but my eyes slide past him to the barmaid, now approaching us with a platter of steaming food. Ooh. No, we shouldn't go. Also, that's like slightly suspicious, Emil. Also, the food is coming. 
I don't think we can anymore. She starts setting plates in front of us. As much as I might want to go, it might be highly suspicious to leave just as our meal arrived. Emil seems to be one of the same mind, and he reluctantly settles back into the chair. No, I want to know. Are you involved? I want to know both questions. Are you in love and or are you involved with someone? Thank you. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> the barmaid sets down the last plate with a raised brow. Enjoy your meats. I watched her go momentarily confused until I my eyes settled on the carnage before us. Oh. That looks yummy, though. Okay, that's a lot, though. Quite literally, everything on the table seems to be some kind of meat. Pink meat, brown meat, red meat. Some covered in sauce, some with pickled vegetables. Ooh. It's a slight upsetting enough to make me forget about our current predicament. Is this a joke? I stare at the food lost in its meatiness. Which part? This or the soldiers? Emil looks like he wants to flip the table. Don't you dare say anything. Don't you dare say you're not going to eat any of this. Are you kidding? This is what they feed lions at the zoo. Your damn stomach got us into this mess and it is going to get us out. <laughs> this is actually hilarious. Bon appetit. With a pout, I timidly poke at the plate nearest to me. It jiggles slightly. I look up at Emil, who gives me an irate shrug. The barmaid, who I'm sure has been looking on with such gratification, sidles over to us. Is everything all right? Um, sorry, but I thought I ordered something with cheese. Her forehead crinkles for a moment before pointing at the shiny brown loaf in the middle. You mean this? <clears throat> you mean this? Liberkas. Yes, a uh, Liberkas. The barmaid simply snickers and walks away. Curious, I take my knife and slice into the loaf. Maybe there's meat. It's a meatloaf? Maybe the cheese is inside. However, as soon as I'm through, all I'm rewarded with is a pink slab that is definitely not cheese slapping onto the plate. <laughs> he looks... How many times he always becomes so grumpy. Oh, what is wrong with this country? I frown. It's just so much meat, with little reprieve in the way of vegetables. I can't possibly eat all of this on my own, nor do I particularly want to. You have to help me with this, Emil. What? No. I'd rather die. <laughs> what? Not even a little, not even like half a sausage? Half a meatloaf thing? I will die if I eat this on my own. It's not humanly possible. He scrunches his face before reluctantly stabbing one of the many sausages with a fork. You will owe me, got it? Fine, I'll owe you. <laughs> Fine, I'll owe you. <laughs> it can't be that unpleasant. Like, you don't... <laughs> anyway, this is like, wow. The other mission's like, oh, look, we were tourists and we ordered too much food. Food that we thought maybe would have been, like, not a lot of meat. But here we are. Pushing down my feelings of being overwhelmed, I slide a small section of meats onto my own plate for my dinner. I'll probably feel sick later, but I suddenly have that trick ticking tickling sensation you get on the back of your neck when someone is watching you. Glancing over, I see the gaggle of soldiers huddled over their table, mumbling and staring at us. I try to ignore it, returning my attention to the meat mountain in front of me. Maybe they want all the food that you've gotten. As long as we don't draw attention to ourselves, everything will be fine. You know, this isn't terrible when you have it with beer. See, look, you're having a good time now. That's good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're going to smell awful after this. Emil lifts his mug to mine and clinks it. Cheers. A la tienne. A la tienne. Woo! <laughs> We continue with our meal, though the conversation doesn't flow like before. Emil looks anxious as he chews through the meat on his plate. I'm too nervous now to suggest going back to our game. Instead, we sit in silence. They are looking at us. Don't look back, just keep eating. One soldier in particular seems fixated on us. Every time I look up, his eyes meet mine. 
Is he thinking we look suspicious? I feel like they're looking at the food, to be honest. I do my best to control my face as I see him, out of the corner of my eye, rise from his chair. Oh god, he's approaching our table. My pulse races. We are about to be caught. Emil visibly tenses, and I see him surreptitiously place a palm over his knife. This could be really bad. When the soldier reaches our table, he stands silently and stiffly above us. For a moment, it is unclear whether or not he has anything to say, but then he clears his throat. He rips his cap off of his head, wringing it in his hand, and practically shouts at me. Okay, so what's either going to happen is that he's going to ask for food, or he's going to think that Lillian, Lillian is so pretty, whatever, and hit on her. You know, like that type of a situation. Wait, what? I'm a thief? Question mark? <laughs> I'm a thief! Wait, why? For stealing food? What are we doing? Okay, you're a young soldier. You do look very young. His soldiers are pulled back and his pale eyes are wide like, sol like saucers. I can't be sure I heard him correctly because what he said is so nonsensical. What? I don't know German, so we're going to go back to the German. Ich bin ein... ein Dieb? Dieb? Dieb. Dieb. Who knows? I don't know. I'm sorry. 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 Sorry to the German speakers. I never, I really never took any German, so I have no idea. Emil shoots. Panicked looks between me and the soldier. Come again? Oh, okay. Um, oh no. I messed up. Um, I'm a thief and... He glances over his shoulder, back at the table that he came from. Did they, like, set him up to do something? The other soldiers gesture madly at him, making heart shapes with their hands. Ah, the young soldier whips his head back to me, his face beat red under his tuft of straw-colored hair. <laughs> oh, it's one of these. Ah, uh, I'm here to steal your heart. I'm so stunned that I forget to respond, girl same. As the silence hangs, the poor boy deflates. I'm sorry, I'll leave now. What is happening? <laughs> it's a little co uh, comedic relief, guys. We were eating in silence all the meats for too long, you know? Uh... The young soldier starts to turn tail, but one of his comrades jumps up and grabs his shoulders, leading him back to me. Eugene here hasn't been able to stop telling us how pretty the redhead at the table next to us is. He finally found the courage to come to talk to you. I smile at the pair of them, poor nervous Eugene and his friend trying to talk him up to me. Eugene is handsome, but I'm afraid I'm a married woman. Show your ring, girl. I hold up my beringed hand for them to see before reaching over to Emil. This is my husband. Edward, give me your hand. <laughs> Emil gives me a wary look before slipping his hand under mine. Girl, if you do that, if you look at me like that, is anyone going to believe that you, like, the two, if you guys, if you look at Lily and like that, is anyone going to believe the two of you are actually married? <laughs> You're ridiculous. I entwine our fingers. The young soldier's friend's mouth makes an O of realization. That's why you should check people's... I mean, it's never... Okay, especially back then, I would assume to a more higher degree of accuracy, looking if someone has a ring on their, fin on their ring finger, it's definitely good to do. Um, but, you know, it happens. He turns his attention to Emil. Oh, sorry, sir. We meant no disrespect. Uh, you've got a lovely wife. Emil stares at them blankly until I intercede. Oh, uh, my husband doesn't speak a word of German. Where are the two of you from? We are Americans. An excited look crosses his face as he launches into broken English. Oh, Americans! Hoop de doo! Hoop de doo! <laughs> Der... Der Landstricker? Charlie Chaplin, yeah? Okay, I... I can... I understand Charlie Chaplin, but... 
The German translation of The Tramp, the on-screen persona that brought actor Charlie Chaplin worldwide fame. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, good to know. I burst out laughing as he starts waddling around like the tramp. Lillian. It's fine, Edward. This gentleman came over here to tell me I'm pretty. I told him I'm married, but he and his friends are very excited to have met a couple of Americans. Emil looks so shocked, he was like, Yeah, you're pretty. But like, <laughs> why do you look so concerned, my dude? Does this happen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what he's concerned about. Does this happen every time you leave the house? That's what you're shocked about. What do you mean? This is the second time we sat down together and someone has ignored me to come talk to you. Relax. He apologized to you, you know. No need for jealousy. I'm not jealous. <laughs> Are you sure? You should be. Someone was trying to chat up your wife. Seeing Emile's annoyed countenance, the soldier's friend puts an arm around Emile, clapping on the chest with the other. <laughs> we buy you a drink, yeah? No hard feelings. He calls out something to the barmaid before pulling up his pulling up chairs for him and his friends. His friend, rather. I am Walter. Das is Eugene. It is is his birthday. Oh, that's exciting. Eugene, I said it is your birthday today. Eugene nods shyly. Yeah, it... <laughs> I was gonna read the German, I was like, wait. Yes, yes, it is my birthday. I smile and congratulate him. He doesn't look any older than 16, but he swears he turned 19 today. Walter turns back to Emil. You like baseball? Uh, yes. Baseball! The soldiers at the table behind us hear this call and hold up their pints, toasting baseball. I shrug at a meal and join in. The barmaid appears with four small glasses and a bottle of something clear. Walter starts pouring and passing us each a glass. What's this? Schnapps. What's this? Schnapps. A long, dry spirit, such as distilled fruit brandy or herbal liquor. Hmm. Okay, I don't think I've pleasure of tasting this before. Snaps. Don't worry. It's a, it's sweet tasting. Although, if it's sweet tasting, I would like to try it if I could. Cheers. He clinks glasses with us. I think we're not going to get back to the mission today, to be honest. I look at Emil helpless. He looks back, equally paralyzed. We both know that it'd be incredibly rude not to drink. We said we wouldn't get drunk. I know clear spirits are dangerous. Maybe it will be okay, though, since these glasses are small. The German boys have already knocked theirs back and are now busy laughing and whooping, but they'll notice soon if we don't take partake soon enough. Prost. I tip my glass back and Emil follows sweet. The insides of my cheeks smart. Eugene was right. It's very sweet. Emil grimaces as he sets his back down. You have a lot of tasty dishes here. May I try some? Please do. I'm relieved. I'm. I was like, yeah. I need. I need some. Of the I need the soldiers to eat some food because that's so many, so much left. I'm relieved to have some help demolishing the mess of food that I ordered. Soon we also have help from Eugene and Walter's comrades who migrate over to us. The rib Eugene, obviously the baby of the group, for being too shy to try chatting up another girl in the tavern, but he insists he's having fun just talking with us. Walter seems to be the only one of the group trying to speak any English, but he is by no means fluent. He does his best to facilitate conversation between Emil and the others, seeming to have a knack for making everyone feel included, oh that's very nice, even if it's only by getting excited over the smallest things everyone has in common. By the time the schnapps bottle makes its second pass around the table, I realize I'm having a good time, and Emil appears to be as well. One soldier curried favored with him by sharing cigarettes. Good. Now the two are in the contest of blowing smoke rings, attempting to get one to go through the others. <laughs> you know what? That's good. You know, you guys, you guys did a lot for day one on your mission. I know time is of the essence, but like, you know, if again, we could not have just like left the table immediately with the food coming and the soldiers coming in. So this is fun. This is a good time.
Great, this is cute. Walter tips the schnapps bottle open over the gl empty glass in front of me and gestures for me to drink up. Do you foostrob? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that means. I nearly choke on my drink, which catches Emil's attention. What does that mean? I loved fruit straw. Do you? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but did you ask her if she fucks straight? Walter cocks his head at him. Emil puts his index finger to his thumb to make a circle and starts poking his other finger in and out. Eugene's eyes go wide and he starts to giggle. I merely redden and hide my face behind my hand. What? Hookstrap. I don't know what that means, absolutely. I have said it wrong, perhaps. Hooks. Hoosh. Hooks. I don't know. You know? He holds up his hands to his forehead like animal ears. I stand and point at him like we're playing charades. Oh! Oh, oh! Fox! Everyone claps as we all come to the same realization. Emil busts a gut laughing, completely doubled over. Yeah, Fuchs. Fuchsstrab. Fuchsstrab? He hands and holds out a hand. His hand. I take it tenuously, and he pulls me in and holds me my arm up. The fox trot. Ah. Uh. A popular dance from the 1910s to the 1940s, originally performed to ragtime music. This is much nicer than what happened with the soldier at the bar the other night. How cute. We glide around the tavern, narrowly missing the barmaid with a full tray of drinks. We spin, when we spin back to our table, Walter calls over to Emil. You now. Dance with your wife. Seeing Walter's arms waving about, his friends gather that he wants Emil to dance with me. Okay. Hey, look, the soldiers are making you two dance, so here we are. They lift him from his chair and push him towards me. Emil looks startled. I... I don't know how to do this. Just follow what I do. I'll, I'll go slow, so don't go stepping on my toes. Oh, look, cute. He's like, I literally am too concentrated. Lillian looks like she's having a grand old time with this. I guide his hand to the small of my back and clasp his hand, other hand in mine, holding it aloft. I try not to blush as I feel his front brush against mine. I'd forgotten this... This is quite the intimate dance. He looks down at me, his brows in a knot. Is this... Am I leading? Yeah, when you go forward, I go back. Like this. I take a step backwards, and Emil mirrors me. It takes a bumble or two, but we are soon moving around the room with him leading the way. Yay! He has to look down. He has to look down a bit to make sure he's not about to stamp my foot or anything, but Emil is smiling through it all, suspiciously like he's having fun. I beam up at him. You're doing it. <laughs> I'm straight fucking. <laughs> Wow, that's going to be an inside joke you guys have. I laugh so hard at this that I misstep and trip on my own feet. I very much expect to hit the floor, so I'm surprised when I feel a pair of strong arms holding me up. Good one, Klutz. He sets me upright and an odd moment passes between us. For a second, when our eyes meet, I swear there's something soft and sweet there. Something new. The start of something new. I love that song. Um, maybe. Oh my god, the tension. The, tension's, the tension is building, guys. We love this. But the spell is broken when Walter and the boys round on Emil. They pour him another drum of schnapps, which he takes with a loud baseball to the crowd who cheer in response. After another few shots of a harrowing game of five-finger fillet using the boys' trench knives, they start getting nostalgic and sim singing something about a girl with a rosy mouth. A dangerous game in which your hand is, oh, I see, is placed fat, flat on a table and a knife is stabbed between each finger with increasing speed. I didn't know that that was five-finger fillet. Also, it is interesting how the, um, the, what do you call that? The, um, the, the, the whole 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 
thing with the misinterpretation of the foxtrot. It's interesting because I'm assuming it has to do with how it divides into like so, like with the syllables. Um, I mean, because like I also don't know where syllables kind of fall in like German um, in terms of like you know syllable one and syllable two or whatever. So it is interesting if those are like two together where you get one in interpretation which Emil is like thinking and then the second where Walter is just like no it's like the foxtrot which is so funny to me so that's fun but look we have, we're gonna having a fun time that's good this is quite wholesome overall very nice Emil finds me leaning against the bar because I'm a, too, a little too wobbly on my feet to stand straight and it's cute because they also had to dance and they liked it <laughs> he's so he's so gone how are we, Ma Choupette? I think we might be drunk. This wasn't supposed to happen. But these guys are actually pretty fun for enemies. Yeah. I guess and slap him on the shoulder as I've come up with something brilliant. Enemies. Emile cracks up. Mon dieu, I'm going to have to carry you back to the hotel, aren't I? Good thing you were so small. I lean my head on my arm like it's a pillow, peering up at a very mellow Emile. Hey, Emile. I'm sorry. For what? We could not have escaped this. No. About earlier. I didn't trust you, and I made a complete mess when- uh, I made a complete mess of things when we tried to cross the border. I'm sorry. My voice comes out small, and my eyes start to water of their own accord. He pats me on the head. It's okay. We can be friends now. Really? I perk up from the bar. I didn't even realize how much everything that happened earlier had been weighing on me until it was taken from my shoulders. A final chorus of la la la's fill the tavern as the song starts to fall apart. You know, Eugene has a very nice voice. That's it. I, oh, that's it. I have to take you out of here before you leave him, leave me for him. I'm about to protest, but even in my drunken state, remember that we have other things to do. We forgot about Herbert. Yeah, we did. Emil starts patting his pockets like he's looking for something. Is it your cigarettes? He suddenly stops. What is it? Oh, I don't have a watch. Ooh. I don't have a watch. What time is it? Walter, time. We hear the soldier's voice over the din of the crowd yell at us that it's nearly 9.30. I turn to Emil. Oh no, we gotta catch him. How many hotels were left on the map? Just one. Okay, so this is probably your map. This is probably your hotel. Come on, we should get out of here before the night is gone. Agreed. Bye, everyone. We wish the boys well, shaking hands and hugging before leaving the tavern. Eugene turns a bright shade of red when I kiss him on the cheek and tell him happy birthday. Parting as friends, we make our way outside into the night. Unsteady on my feet, I end up leaning on Emil, though he doesn't seem any more sober than me. As we weave down the cobblestone street, the cool spring air makes me shiver. Moments later, a warm, thick fabric envelops me. Emile's jacket. Don't you need this? I've got a belly full of liquor. I'm warm. I'm full of liquor, too. Your belly must be broken. <laughs> I slip my arms through the jacket sleeves and adjust it on my shoulders. I catch whiffs of bergamot and cedar mixed with the slightest hint of cigarette smoke. Where to, Mr. Twain? You don't know where we're going? I was following you. <laughs> okay, you guys are quite out of it, so... Uh, check the map. It's in the genre. La poche. A uh, pocket inside. I chuckle at his disorientation. It's clear his English skills are beginning to lose the battle against heavy drinking. I search around his pockets until I find the map. I turn it this way and that, attempting to orient myself. This way. I point in the direction that feels right, okay, and make my charge. 
We stumble around the winding streets of Little Rock using my questionable navigation. Emil jokingly refers to me as Capitaine as he follows me around. We make pretty good progress until we are confronted with a steep hill. Who would put such a climb here? Ridiculous. The map says we have to. My feet hurt, though. I trip over to a nearby building and lean against the wall while I remove my shoes. Emil watches me for a moment and thought before turning to the hill resolutely. Olian, viens. What? Come here and give me your shoes. I obey. What are you going to do? <laughs> something... <laughs> something manly. Wait, were you gonna give a piggyback ride or something? <laughs> You guys are so cute. Oh my god, I stopped. This is just day one. How long are we abroad for this mission? It's not supposed to be that long, so... A lot has happened on the first day already. He hinges forward. Hop on. You are going to carry me up this hill? You're crazy. Any suggestion that I cannot do this will only make me want to do it more. We must defeat this hill. <laughs> Allez. I hand him my shoes and hop on his back, throwing my arms around his neck. He grabs my legs, hoisting me up slightly to keep me from slipping down. Ready? Oh my god, they look so funny. <laughs> They're just like, whoosh. Onward! He starts charging up at the hill at top speed while making the wind blow through my hair. I start cheering. By the time we reach the top, he is out of breath. Go, Emil, go. He lets me slide down his back. Once delivering me back to the ground, he turns to me, pumping his fists in the air like a champion. You did that, Emil. You got it. I mean, I'm all peals of laughter. I can't believe it. You're like an Olympian. How can you smoke so much and still do something like that? To be fair, carrying you is like carrying around a baguette. Thin and pale. A baguette? If I'm a baguette, what are you? He takes a second to think before answering... I'm just a palmier. Simple. A crispy French pastry roll and rolled into the shape of a heart or an elephant ear. Those are good palmiers. And shaped like an elephant ear? Emile cracks a smile. Well, oh, this is new. Is this how it feels to be called ugly? Oh, for crying out loud. Shut up. I throw a playful slap at his arm, but miss. He catches my wrist and yanks me towards him. Do I feel like an elephant ear? He guides my hand to his chest, up his neck, to land on his cheek. I feel my own chest flutter. What is this? When did we start flirting like this? Well, you guys got drunk and now here we are. <laughs> well, you know, again, you're on a mission and your mission entails that you have to pretend that you're married. And then we were at, you guys were at the bar, and then you got drunk because the soldiers were like very nice and were like having fun. And then here you are. I don't know. Don't ask me. I'm just gonna say, most likely because there was already existing tension before, and now it's just been, you know, uh, what do you call that? Not exasperated. I don't want to say that. I just like it's definitely like more highlighted, and maybe put forth into the light a bit more because you guys are both drunk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. You are definitely... man-shaped. A wave of heat washes over me. I'm attracted to him. Yes, Lillian, we knew this from the beginning. You acted like you... <laughs> okay, good. She realized in her own time, but I, it's so funny to me sometimes where I'm just like, wow. How could you not have known? <laughs> I feel like you kind of knew from the beginning, but you were, you were, you know, you know, denying the possibility. When did this happen? I pull back my hands, deciding to cross my arms to prevent any more illicit touching. Uh, let's keep going. I put my shoes back on and we resume our journey. As we walk along, my eyes keep slipping back to Emil, his profile, the set of his brow, the little bump in his nose. The crispness of, crispness of his white shirt stands out in the dark, his trim figure in his waistcoat. His eyes catch mine appraising him. I look away, pretending that I wasn't admiring him. The smile on his face when I glance back tells me that it's too late. Is this more than just attraction? Do I 
like Emil? My cheeks burn at the thought. The longer I sit with the idea, the more certain I feel that I do. But is he even available? This is a question because we, we didn't get there earlier with our questioning. I feel like that was the real question behind my line of questioning. That was the real reason behind my line of questioning earlier, even if I didn't want to admit it then. Emil, earlier when I asked about relationships, we were interrupted. She's so, girl, she's really blushing. She's like, so, she's like absolutely high level. Like, she's like, I need to know. Slash, we're also drunk, so it's fine. Yes, you asked if I was in love with anyone. I'm not. Good. I mean, I know what you mean. <gasps> wow, these lines are fun. The quiet of the night hangs heavy for a moment. We continue along until Emil stops. Wait, is that map upside down again? What? No. Wait, yes, it is. Oops. <laughs> Why did you let her navigate in the first place? You guys, I feel like, I mean, not let her, but obviously I feel like a little bit more, let's both check the map and see what's happening. Though, you know, sometimes you just don't want to navigate and you have, you are the person in your party navigate and you just trust them. And it's okay because we don't want to think about it. It's fine. If we didn't go up the hill, then none of this would have happened in the past, like, whatever, 10, 15 minutes that you guys have been walking. So we're fine. You are not allowed, <laughs> you are not allowed to navigate anymore. Give me that. He goes to grab the map, but I pull it away. It quickly devolves into a game of keep away. A squeal escapes me as I turn to scamper down the street. Emil gives chase. Someone yells at us in German from an open window to shut up. I start to shush him to keep him from waking the neighborhood, but he starts shushing me right back. We exchange shushes until we forgot, forget when what even started it. We continue weaving along until we reach the, wa the walled cater cotter. Okay, so we made it. Ooh, cute. It's larger, larger than the Hotel Lewen and a little more upscale. I don't know if I should just leave it there, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, I just checked my time of my recording and it... I might stop it here, even though it's not the cleanest, like, transition um, in terms of, like, ending a video here. But a lot has happened. A lot of, a lot of... Okay, so they've checked... Recap. Emil and Lillian, Lillian and Emil, they both checked five out of the six hotels that Herbert Jenham can be at. He was not at the first one that they thought he would be at, which is why they went there, but they checked the rest. And on the way for the last one, Lillian was hungry, and so they went to this random pub. And then they met these German soldiers, and then they ended up drinking and eating on the food and having a merry time. And now they're kind of like a little bit, you know, drunk. And But they made it to this hotel, which I just, it's the Waldkotter, um, I think. And on the way there, increasing of tensions and stuff between the two um, have happened, which is great for me to see. I'm like very in love, I like love this so much. Um, and we're kind of to see what, gonna, what is gonna happen next. Uh, we're gonna see if Jenna's here, this hotel, this spa hotel. Um, we're gonna see what, in happens with Lillian and Emil going forward and what else is going to be you know happening um during this assignment we'll see I'm very much into this and I hope you are too so if you have enjoyed the video please leave a like um and if you want to know when I um post the next part you should subscribe to my channel because that's um one way to know that I will do that and also I also play um other official novels so if you want to check out some other ones that is also my channel anyways thank you so much for watching i appreciate you and i hope you have a lovely rest of your day and i will see you next time bye